Hey family, this is Pastor Zoe. Hope you're having a great time. I'm right here in front of Schlatter Chapel, right here on the campus of Warner Pacific University. Well, I want to invite you to another episode of Night Talk. And today we're gonna speak with Juju. She is on the volleyball team and she also serves as our student chaplain. I am so excited to be able to speak with her on today. And she's gonna tell us how her faith actually help to shape her into who she is on today. So I'm inviting you to come on in and let's have that conversation with Juju as she tells us how her faith has shaped her. Let's do it. Come on. Hey, Water Pacific family. How are you? This is Pastor Zoe and I have Juju here hanging out with us. And it's always a privilege and an honor. This is Night Talk and this is the first one for this semester that we're doing, and I'm glad that Juju is here to start it off for us. So, hey, Juju, how you doing? I'm doing great. I'm good, doing good, doing great. great. How about chapel yesterday? That was great. Yeah, yeah. that was really good. <laughs> yeah, it, it was, was awesome. Really, I felt like it was a good opportunity for us as students, like especially within the chapel ministry, to be able to like have the students back in that moment because I know it's a vulnerable moment, you know, mm -hmm. like when you're surrendering yourself to God. So I just I think we felt compelled in a way to get up there and you know just stand behind them just to know that they have support from not only you as pastor but you know as us yeah. the ministry team so. yes awesome and for those of you who don't know there are some special things going on here on campus and i would dare call it a revival there are students there really hungering for spiritual things and may not know exactly how to get it but by the help of god and the grace of god we're showing them the way in it's exciting times here at Warner Pacific University. But here at Night Talk, once again, we're talking to Juju. So first of all, Juju, tell me a little bit about yourself. Tell everybody a little bit about your background and all of that. Um, I guess playing on the surface, I would say I'm from Hawaii. Um, I play volleyball. Um, I originally went to school in Missouri, but then now I'm here in Oregon. I'm glad to be close to home. Um, I'm really excited to continue having this position and just be able to be there for so not only the students that are here already, but the also the incoming students. So yeah, I'm yeah, excited. that's awesome. Now, Juju, uh, this past uh, fall semester, I remember it was a soccer game. Yeah, it was a weird <laughs> place. Yeah, for sure. Weird yeah, place. soccer game, and and uh, I believe it was Vanessa was like, you have to meet her, <laughs> and so I met Juju at the soccer game, and she was so bubbly and just smiling and everything. I'm like, you know what? It this might work. this, it gonna, might work. this <laughs> gonna work out right here, <laughs> and I wasn't even thinking of her being like a student chaplain. I just thought she was just cool, you know. And and it just one thing grew into another. And there were a couple of people that actually was like, "Yeah, I speak with her, and she's helped me." And I'm like, "Whoa, look at this!" You know, so that that was something else. So. Um, that, that's great. So you come by way of Hawaii, which I would love to visit Hawaii sometime. Yeah, you so. got to come to Oahu. Oahu's <laughs> the main one for sure. Okay, great. So tell us about you growing up. How was it? Because I know everybody sees how bubbly you are, and we want to know how your faith has helped to shape you to who you are. Mm -hmm. But just give us a little history growing up. How was it? Um, I would say growing up, I definitely was privileged because I grew up in the church. Mm -hmm. So. My grandparents are actually pastors. They've been pastors ever since my mom was like probably a young adult. So it's been like ever since I was came out the womb pretty much. So it's like, I guess that's what shaped me to be who I am. And also coming from a big family, I'm Samoan, I'm part Polynesian. So I'm very family oriented. And especially in the Polynesian culture, God is a big, big part of our lives. So. I guess I was just privileged and lucky enough to be able to be surrounded by just the faith. And you know, so I guess that pretty much made me who I am today because whether it was at church or whether it was at school or whether it was just a family event, I was always being, you know, left mm -hmm. and right. It was all about God. So I was just, right. that's just made me who I am today. That's and I'm cool. just so happy and just blessed, honestly, to even be here. Like, thank you, Pastor, you yeah, know, for this yeah, little I, night I, talk. I yeah. about you. That's pretty cool. So you say you come from a big family now. Yeah. Do you have a lot of siblings? Yeah. So, so many of I have seven siblings. Yeah. Wow. So we have, um, so eight total, so seven siblings. So I have four girls, four boys. 
and also like my grandma and grandpa so he has about 12 siblings mm -hmm. and then they have like grandkids about 11 so like each everybody has at least about five or more kids from yeah. per person so mm -hmm. that's why I just it just makes a whole lineage yeah wow that much. sounds like my wife's family because <laughs> uh her dad had like 11 or whatever mm -hmm. and they had five children and so all of us have multiple yeah, children so sure. I, I get it not on my side, but her side. It's like <laughs> home alone. Whenever we go yeah. somewhere, it's a big pack of us. <laughs> I bet you wasn't expecting that when you got yeah, to know Yeah, I just decided, yeah, that. I wasn't. So that that's cool. So growing up, you were in the church and all mm -hmm. that. So uh, tell us a little bit, because the last few I had didn't have that type of upbringing. And actually, yeah. I had a similar one to you. I grew up mm -hmm. in church and yeah. all that, not the big family. But... Um, what are what are some of the things you think are staples in your life where you can point back to like you know what this is one of the major things that happened in my life that caused me to because there's some people that grow up in yeah. church and they're like I don't want this. yeah they just don't receive right. you know mm -hmm. in a way. so I would say that personally um, a big person he's my best friend he's my dad so I guess I grew up in the church but I didn't really know or have a relationship with God and that's honestly the most important thing like if you don't have a relationship then it's just a religion like mm -hmm. religion is different from relationship with god because mm -hmm. you know you won't make it to heaven without a relationship with god so for me i guess seeing the changes in my dad because you know i didn't have a perfect life you know mm -hmm. so my parents you know they went through a lot my dad he wasn't the best guy mm -hmm. when we were younger mm -hmm. so when he changed and he became like wow like this man of god mm -hmm. it was to me that was my way of knowing that God was real. Wow. He was the definition of like, wow, like God can do anything because I saw the change in my dad. I saw he went from jail to drinking to doing, you know, things that weren't right. And like, for me, I didn't look up to that. But once he became, he met God and became a man of God, that's when I knew that God wow. was real because wow. not nobody can change somebody that drastic. You know, mm -hmm. only God can do something like that. So I guess, from that point on and that was only about like probably seven years ago mm -hmm. so i was probably still in like middle school about to be in high school kind mm -hmm. of thing i was in that age was it's really important in that time period especially right. so that was when i really met god because i grew up in the church but i never really knew who he was mm -hmm. so in that moment that's when i knew who god was wow and that's when he meant more to me you know and i started doing my own relationship i was like oh i, I if he can be like that, you know, what makes you think I can't be, you know, I can't be somebody like that. So, yeah. Wow. That is an awesome testimony. I love that. And that's a testimony to mm -hmm. God's faithfulness. And even with your dad, yeah. just like, hey, this is how I'm going to do it. Yeah. And for the family to see that, that sure. that's one of the best testimonies ever for your family to be yeah. able to vouch. <laughs> for no, for sure. With God. Yeah. And it's like now he's my best friend it's like i never would expect it you know it was like you had no relationship with not only god but i didn't have a relationship with my dad mm -hmm. and like now it's like we're inseparable it's wow. like crazy so it's just like yeah i'm just really glad to you know not only be close to my dad but also my mom because you know it was like she was trying so hard you know it's like when you try to do something by yourself so like you can't get through it but like they always say when you have god with you anything is possible mm -hmm. so it's like not only was she fighting but god was fighting with her and that's when it made it possible for my dad you know to make his wow. breakthrough wow so, yeah, I'm just so you got to see all of that mm -hmm. and that helped you in your faith yeah. and challenges you might have faced or whatever and you're like man if god did yeah. it here he definitely can do it there yeah. Well, you know, your personality is just so bubble, bubbly and attractive. Like, I could tell people are attracted to you. So, I know you're an athlete and all of that. How does that help you, like, in your athletics and just your everyday life? Well, I guess that definitely helped me athletically and academically because I had opportunities being this way, you know? Because in high school, I was totally blessed and able to, like, I had the honor to be, like, class president and everything for my senior class year. And it was just, like, those opportunities come with being somebody that's willing to talk and just willing to just get to know somebody. And that's something I really recommend, and especially, like, being in my position and just being just a student at a school, you know? It's not about being popular. It's really about just 
having the ability to get to know people because you don't know like their story might change you might change some of the things that you might be doing that you may think is right but it's wrong and so like i've learned a lot by being this way and i feel like that's what motivates me to continue being this way because i feel like if i don't i'm gonna lose out mm -hmm. in a certain way you know yeah. something maybe you know a simple just talk saying hi and they might just be like oh hey like you know I think you know this is where I grew up and this is something and I'm like wow I didn't know that like I didn't know that culturally you know I grew up differently so it's like you get to learn so it's not really benefiting not only them but the people I'm talking to but I benefit for myself so, wow, so it's yeah. helping help yeah. you to be open-minded yeah. and different things of that yeah. nature and be able to make adjustments when you need mm -hmm. to make it that's awesome I, I just <laughs> it's just great so now that you're a student chaplain which you, this is your second yeah. semester how is that going and what are some things you're grateful for for your experiences tell I'm, us a little bit about that i'm definitely grateful just for you pastor you know you and vanessa really were the starters of all this like like you said the soccer game you know i would never expect this something like you know you would have thought at church maybe you know mm -hmm. where it's meant to be as the chapel and but then it's like at a soccer game that's where I, you know, met you and stuff. So like, it's just crazy to think about, like, it's just where everything began. Mm -hmm. And I guess like having this position just helped me get to know more people. Like I said, it, it was already in my interest to get to know people. So like being able to talk about my faith mm -hmm. and be able to reach others and not only a school setting, but in that environment that I'm already used to, mm -hmm. it's definitely like, it's like a natural feeling for me. So I just really appreciate, you know, just being given the opportunity in the first place. Yes, well, that's I'm awesome. Well, we're glad you're on a team because yeah. without you, I can't do what I do. <laughs> hey, <laughs> so it's everybody, a, everybody's putting hands in. Yes. So I'm just glad to have everybody, <laughs> yeah. obviously. That's honest. That's, that's great. And so what I want you to do is spend a few moments and if there's some of your peers, some of the students that are going through some things, mm -hmm. what are some suggestions that you may have for them if they're going through some things and they feel like giving up hope what are what do you want to tell them well i think you know i guess we're all in the same we're in the same boat you know we're all college students we're still young we're young adults and you know we're still learning in life so i guess my advice would be always you know this might be cliche you know it might be repetitive but it always like we always say you know turn to god like he really is like the pillar of like all good things, you know, whether it's, you know, being patient, you want to, you know, you want to be more kind to somebody, you want to be just open minded, like those are all the qualities, those are all the fruits of the spirit that God provides for you. So like, if you can't do it on your own, I'm telling you, like God can definitely like bring those things into your life. So just turn to God in any scenario, whether it's good or bad, if he's helping you just thank God. If he's, you know, if you feel like he's not there, he is there. I just want to let you know. But if he feels like, if it feels to you that he's not there, just thank God anyways. You know, he'll appreciate you. That's the main thing. You like, just know that he loves you and he's there for you. And yeah, just keep remembering that. That's a good reminder. That's something I got to remind myself every day as well. So. I love it. I love it. You heard it here, the <laughs> student chaplain, Juju, here at Warner Pacific University. We are excited about what God is doing. And like she said, it's not a cliche. We can feel an actual difference <laughs> of what's going on here on campus. And she has boots on the ground. She's able to speak with students and just the amount of students that are hungering and thirsting after spiritual things. And we know that Jesus is the answer. So thank you for joining us here at Night Talk, Juju. Thank you so thank much. You, of course, yes. And we thank God for you. So we want you to join us for the next episode of Night Talk. God bless you.